Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Riddler's Math Lessons. The first unit we're going to be starting off with this year is Unit Pricing and Currency Exchange. Now all of this can be found in our class notebook, so it's under the OneNote. And under the class documents, you can find the tab that says Unit 1, use in Unit Pricing and Currency Exchange. Now, sliding down here, the topic that we're going to be looking at today is proportional reasoning. So there's two terms that we have to look at first. The first one is ratios. So a ratio is a number that compares two numbers that are measured in the same unit. So important that we're looking at the same unit here. A ratio can be written in several ways. Now, if you're baking a cake and you're looking at two cups of flour for every three cups of sugar, you would want to have every time you increase the two cups of flour, you're increasing the sugar by three cups. Now this would be written with a two colon three, or you could write it as a fraction of two over three. The next term that we wanna look at is proportion. So this is a fractional statement of equality between two ratios or rates. Now an example of this would be two over three equals 20 over 30. So we're looking at equality here. So this is also equal to 4 over 6. So they all are equal to each other because they're following the same ratio. Because 2 multiplied by 10 gives you 20. 3 multiplied by 10 gives you 30. So they are equal to each other because they're following the same ratio. In a ratio, since the units are the same, they essentially cancel each other out. In your calculations, you can omit the units, but remember to include them in your solution. To solve a proportion with missing information, we must perform the same operation to both sides. We may also use the method of cross multiplication. In example one here, it's asking us to solve for the x in this equation containing fractions. Now we want to solve for x, so that's our unknown currently. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to cross multiply. So x is going to multiply with 24 and 6 is going to multiply with 5. Now x multiplied by 24 creates 24 x equals 5 multiplied by 6 results in 30. Now you don't want to have the 24 attached to the x because you want to have x by itself. In order to get x by itself we have to divide it by 24. Now dividing it by 24, we have to do that to the other side as well. This cancels off the 24 on the first side, and you're left with x equals 30 divided by 24, which gives you x equals 1.25, or 30 over 24. For B, we have x over 42 equals 36 over 72. Now again, our x's are unknown, and we're going to cross multiply first. So x is multiplying with 72, and 42 is multiplying with 36. x times 72 makes 72x equals... 42 multiplied by 36 is 1,512. Next, we want to get x by itself. So we're going to divide by 72. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Divide by 72. That cancels 
those x or the 72 off and you're left with just x and your last thing that you need to do is 1512 divided by 72 which gives you x of 21 In our third example here, we have x on the bottom, but we're still following the same steps. We're going to cross multiply the 5 with the 15 and the x with the 36, giving you 36x equals 5 times 15, which is 75. Our next step that we need to do is isolate x by itself which means we have to divide it by 36 and we do it to the other side as well divide by 36 and that cancels off and we're left with x 75 divided by 36 which is 2.08 for d we have x on the other side of the equation, but it's still following the same steps. We have to cross multiply first, giving us 4 times x, which is 4x, and 6.2 multiplied by 1.3, which gives us 8.06. Our next step is to isolate x by dividing it by the 4 that's in front of it, and doing the same to the other side, which cancels off the 4, giving us x. And we have 8.06 divided by 4, which gives us 2.015. So that finishes the four examples on this page. The big thing that we want to take away from this is we have one variable that we don't know. In order to solve for this variable when it's set up as fractions, we want to cross multiply and isolate x by itself. In order to isolate x, you're dividing by the number that's in front of it on both sides of the equation, resulting in one answer for x. The next term that we're going to be looking at is rate. Rate is similar to ratio, but it compares two numbers with different units. So an example of this would be 40 revolutions per minute, or you could have 60 kilometers per hour, or you could have 99 cents per kilogram. So these all involve two different units. A rate can be expressed using the same notation as a ratio. Since the units are different in the two terms, they must be used. In example two, engines that require you to mix oil with fuel to provide lubrication are called two-stroke engines. A follower at a logging site needs to refill the chainsaw's fuel can. The ratio of gasoline to oil that is needed is 40 parts of gasoline to one part of oil. The chainsaw's fuel can hold 8 liters of gasoline. How much oil should be added to the gasoline to obtain the correct ratio? Now, our starting point here is to figure out what are we looking for. Well, the ratio that we're looking for is gasoline to oil. Now, it says it is 40 parts of gasoline to one part of oil. So we know it's 40 to one. The sentence after tells us that the chainsaw's fuel can hold eight liters of gasoline. So we have 8 liters and we have an unknown here. We're trying to figure out how much oil do we need to use. Well, our ratio can turn into our fraction. We have 40 over 1 equals 8 over 
are unknown. Now, instead of a question mark, I'm going to use an X. Now we're set up just as we were on the last examples that we practiced, and we're going to do our cross multiplication. So the 40 is multiplying with the X, and the 8 is multiplying with the 1. 40 times X gives you 40X equals 1 times 8 is 8. Our next step is to isolate X by itself by dividing by 40 and dividing by 40. That cancels off the 40s and leaves X by itself. And we have 8 divided by 40, which lives, leaves us with X equaling 0 0.2 liters. Now don't forget to put your liters in as your unit. For example three, John Luke, a builder, has found that he can arrange the work cubicles of his employees best if the ratio between the length and the width of the room is three to two. If the room is six meters long, how wide should the room be? Well, again, the first thing we want to do is think about what are we looking for? What is the ratio we want to find? So we're looking for length to width. Now, in the question, it tells us the ratio between the length and width of the room is 3 to 2. And it also tells us the room is 6 meters long. So under the L, it's 6, and we want to find out what our width is going to be. Now we can turn our ratio into a fraction here of 3 over 2 equals 6 over X. Now it's important that if your length is on this side, they're both ending up on the top. Do not flip your fractions. Our next step is to cross multiply. So we have three multiplied by X, which is three X equal two multiplied by six, which is 12. Our next step is to isolate X by dividing by three and divide by three, which cancels off your threes. And you have X equal 12 divided by 3, which gives you 4. And pay attention to what our unit is. Our unit is going to be meters, so it is 4 meters wide. For example, 4 here. If salmon costs $1.89 for 100 grams, how much will it cost to buy 250 grams of salmon? So, we have to first, again, set up our ratio. So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the price in comparison to the number of grams. Our price is $1.89 for 100 grams. Now, we want to buy... 250 grams of salmon, so our price is unknown, but we know we want 250 grams of salmon. Now we can turn these ratios into fractions. Dollar 89 over 100 grams is equal to our price that we don't know yet over 250 grams. Our next step is to cross multiply and I'm going to change this question mark to an X. So 100 multiplied by X gives us 100 X is equal to 1.89 multiplied by 250 which is 472.5. The next thing we need to do is isolate our X by dividing by 100 
and we have to do that to the other side as well. Divide by 100. This cancels off the 100 on this side, leaving x by itself. And we have 472.5 divided by 100 gives us 4.725. Now that's too many decimals to represent a dollar amount, so we need to change this to x equals four dollars and seventy three cents remember when you're dealing with money you should always be rounding to two decimal places in our last example a local plumbing store sells a hundred copper plated pipe straps for four dollars and ninety seven cents you have estimated that you require seventy five straps how much will you pay for 75 straps? Now again, your first thing is to set up what your ratio is going to be about. Now we're looking at our number of copper plated pipe straps to the dollar amount. So I'm going to put C for copper and a dollar for the dollar amount. It was 100 copper plated pipe straps for four dollars and 97 cents now we need 75 straps and we want to figure out how much this is going to be now i'm going to leave this answer for you to look up in the class one note so what you should be doing right now is answering this on your own and then checking your answer in the class OneNote. This is going to finish for the lesson for today. And if you have any questions, please make sure you talk to me in class or send me a message on Teams. Have a good day.